it is just an extreme, extreme honor today to be in Tokyo, Japan, podcast interviewing Dr. Kiyotaka Umezu. Yep. Did I get that right? Yeah, you get that right. Almost. And <laughs> you, um, you graduated from Nippon Dental School in 1997, but then you went to um, Loma, Loma Linda right. uh, to do a residency in... Um, Oral implantology. Yes, oral implantology. Yes, oral implantology, and in Loma Linda, and that's where uh, when I got out of school in uh, dental school in, in University of Missouri, Kansas City, mm -hmm. um, to practice in Arizona, I had to go to Loma Linda oh. um, to take my boards. Oh, okay, in yes, yes, they take the board. That's what and I um, and that's also where Dan Fisher, the uh -huh. founder of Ultradent, right? He went to uh, Loma Linda. He, he went to yeah undergrads at the he he went to the Loma. What Linda. year did he get out of there? Do you remember? Um. I don't know. I don't know. You probably weren't born yet. <laughs> yeah, maybe. That's... So that is just amazing. So I was so excited. Um, you're, we, we both have our diplomat in uh -huh. the... American Board of Oral Implantology. American Board of Oral Implantology. Uh -huh. And um, I can't even remember when I got mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was in the, I think it was in the early 1990s. But um, you're the only diplomat of the American Board of Oral Implantology right. in all of Nippon. Mm-hmm. And That's for you right. Americans, Nippon means Japan. Okay, yeah, so when you go, next time you go to Germany, remember you're in Deutschland. In Deutschland. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it's interesting in Japan. In Japan, um, they call it Nippon, but some of the people call it Nihon. Mm -hmm. Nihon. So so um, I, now I assume you know where I, I live in the United States. Some call it America. Some call it the USA. Right. But some call it Nihon, mm -hmm. and some call it Nippon. What's the, what's the different use of Nippon Nihon? Is it Older or is it uh, more uh, formal? Or? I guess I'm not sure because uh, any, anyways, the Japan itself is not. You know, we don't call ourselves Japan, so that's a Nippon or Nihon. It's a, I, the Nippon is, sounds like more this older style. Nihon is uh, maybe current style, but so we don't know which one is. Which so Nippon's is older, so that's why I'm calling it Nippon because I'm fifty fifty three. <laughs> And you're calling it yeah, Nahan because you're still in your youthful, youthful age. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, one of the things I like to, um, one of the things I like to do talking to dentists around the world is that I believe that um, when a dentist is born, raised, reared, lives in one country, mm -hmm. they think everything is um, finite. Mm -hmm. And and to um, Albert Einstein said, you can't solve today's problems with today's thinking because mm -hmm. your thinking is causing the problems and like like when you go to the united kingdom when i got out of school in 87 um all 19,000 dentists in in um in england uh, participated in the nhs mm -hmm. and they paid very low fees right and they just kept cutting the fees lower and lower and lower and finally dentists in the uk realized well they don't even have dental insurance in singapore they don't even have it in brazil Maybe I don't even need to play this game. And now, um, I've been out of school 28 years, and now 5,000 dentists in the United Kingdom don't even participate in the NHS. So what I like to do is, is what I like to talk to you is you're um, so amazing because you, um, you've you lived in, you practice dentistry in California, United States. Not exactly how they're practicing because I didn't have the uh, license because I'm not, I, the, I was, uh, I'm the fourth generation of the dentistry. So I know. You're fourth generation? Yes, yes. A Your great dad, grandfather. Grandpa, yes, oh yes. my God. <laughs> Congratulations. I know. I wish I could have the, the li dental license when I was born because I'm the first generation, but it's, I couldn't get it. So that's why I, yeah. I have to go through the dental school and after that I went to the, that uh, grad school in California. But anyways, I didn't, I, I'm, no sh I'm, I'm sure I was going to come back. So I didn't go through the board because I didn't want to get the license over there because I don't want to start over this, uh, whatever I studied in the dental school in Japan and do it over in the United States. So that's why I went to that uh, grad school. So anyway, so, I, so the practically I didn't practice it in California, but I was helping and seeing, watching and the help, the talking to the, the practitioner in California. So pretty much I can discuss what the situation they have in the United States, what's good about it without the insurance or something like that. But the, with something that you good, 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 good thing is about uh, you know, having an insurance in Japan. And then, you know, bad thing is about having an insurance. So that's, uh, you know, the, uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult to say one thing. So. Right, yeah, the devil's always in the details. Yeah. But, but but explain this, because what talking to Japanese dentists, what I get a feeling for is um, they love orthodontics because okay. the Japanese Dental Association, the Japanese insurance um, mm -hmm. 
the national Japanese um, dental insurance company, doesn't set a fee for orthodontics or implants. Okay. But they do set fees for fillings, crowns, and exactly. root canals. Mm -hmm. And some of them say that the um, that they want to do orthodontics or place implants because they have the freedom to raise mm. their price. But like it's specifically with root canals, that the fee is so low for root canals um, that it's virtually hard to be able to afford to take the time mm -hmm. to do it. Like, you know, what, what, what is your thoughts on the fee for a root canal, a root canal in the United States versus Japan? Yeah, and also to say, you know, just, uh, just based on the uh, national health care insurance in Japan, it's the orthodontic treatment, it's very, as you know, the fee is very low. So that's why. <laughs> how low? So, how yeah. low? It's like, it's like maybe less than one tenth. Of the United States. Of the United States. Yeah, so the United States is about a thousand bucks for a root canal and here yeah. it's about a hundred dollars US. Maybe at the most. At the most. At the most. Okay. And also that's what is what happened is in Japan most of the people have a tendency that is in the past. I'm not sure if there's a current the dentist or younger generation does it the same, same thing like this. But in pa in the past what they do is instead of they, they, they can uh, not charge uh, the too much for a root canal, what they do is they just ask the patient, okay, spend five minutes one time but we can just charge for it just a re examination. So we can just uh, you know ask them to come back like uh, once a week and just to uh, see the patient of five 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 minutes and just uh, clean it inside and put it some chem chemicals and five just five minutes five minutes and then so they, they can come over like uh, for example over five ten times then they can charge for the re examination for five ten times so they can be uh, the one of the main charge for the root canal if they do the only the root canal so that's why it's a uh, you know five minutes what you can do you know you say hi and if you are a talkative person if you talk. <laughs> I mean, that's all about it, right? So that's why I, I, I don't think it's it's happening right now. But it seems like it's a, you know, the root canal treatment is. So that's why there's no, you know, from the United States, if you do the microscope and you spend the, the rubber dam and they just spend the 90 minutes or 60 minutes, maybe you the root canal treatment, good root canal treatment can be done with uh, maybe two three appointments, and also they just uh, do like the very much straightforward. But this, uh, that is a different in the background. So that's why it's uh, maybe this in Japan. Sometimes the root canal treatment is uh, uh, very bad. So that's why the five ten years later, maybe the re uh, the treatment retreatment is necessary. So I don't think it's like a very bad rotation or the circulation starting to begin with. Are they are they doing it um with uh, lateral condensation? Or are they using more a sargenti? The before for for the uh, uh, for the big the, to to begin with, uh, it was a lot lateral condensation first. But lately, that there's a lot of people there they're having a, a a microscope, and they do a lot of people that doing a, uh, doing a, the rubber dams, and uh, just uh, spend more time like one hour or one hour and nine minutes, or just uh, did you guys do in the United States? Some people that say, but uh, to do that. We cannot charge as like a dental uh, the insurance. So that's why the most of people did uh, explain to the to the patient. Okay, if you do that at uh, the uh, insurance, you know we cannot charge a lot, and we cannot do it the right way. So that's why we explain the patient that we might you know have to charge more, of course. But that uh, that, that uh, but the result and also this is what we do is more accurate. That's why how we explain. So important thing is like the patient it has but has a choice. Uh, of the which kind of the treatment they want to get, but at least sometimes say if you just uh, uh, go for a, just a, you know the dentist who is seeing a patient like a 70, 80 patient per day, they don't even have a talk uh, that time to talk about or explain the patient which kind of the direction you, they want to go. So that's the difference. So so good thing about the, my environment is actually is right now so I don't have the access yet right now, but it's the, the last year. Until the two years ago, the uh, we I had one of the U.S. dentists working with me, so that's what is he was doing the dentistry. The, maybe they say in the future if you come back, maybe this, I'm going to introduce him. He is uh, he retired. He is 70 years old or something like that. So, but he's been uh, practicing in Japan for past 30 years in Japan. So I think it's I know the only one at the dentist the guy who licensed from the the United States and who got licensed in Japan and he had a practice in the same 30 years in Japan so he maybe did he knows that maybe he might be that uh, giving you the some other aspect of the, your answer the what kind of the situation they have for the question that you uh, what you have right now so where, where was he born West Virginia and he West went Virginia the, yeah and he went to the Michigan University for uh, the undergrad and after that the dental school which dental school was it 
No, 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 no. Osaka is after, yeah, in the United States. Hawaii? Really? <laughs> I don't think Hawaii has a dental school. <laughs> Hawaii doesn't have a dental no, school. No, anyway, so, yeah. He, but, but, in, in, so, in, in, what made him come to Japan? It had to be love. Yeah. Was it love? Yeah. yeah. He might, he became a dentist. I saw that So, before he became a dentist, he fell in love with a Japanese girl? Yeah. Yeah, they she say... Was, uh, she was a uh, Japanese teacher. And back home in America? Oh, in But he met her. How did he meet her? Uh, because she was his Japanese teacher. In the United States? In Japan. So already but how did he, he get to Japan then? They say only 1% of the 7 billion earthlings live in a country they weren't born in. And they only leave for three reasons. And it's about a third, a third, a third. It's for a job, for love, or they're running from the law. <laughs> so if he's a dentist, we're just going to go with that he's Doc Holliday. And he was running from the law and came over here and fell in love with a Japanese woman from Kobe. It's just a much greater story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it is, you can do it at a much, much longer interview from, from him. Yeah? Is, yeah, he, is he around here in Tokyo? Uh, he is living in Tokyo, but it's, uh, right now he is very good at the, at the, in the inspired for the volunteering for the past the, several, the 10, 20 years. So, so the, after he they retired, he goes to the, uh, where? What? Myanmar. Myanmar. And giving them the free treatment or something, giving them the do you have Do you have his phone number? I do have the, his phone number. Try, try, try getting, see Ryan if we can get him on his phone number. So, um, so you have his phone number? Yeah, he, he was working with me, isn't I asked him to come over here. Before. Today? No, 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 no. That, that, when I opened up my clinic it's three years ago. So I asked him to, he was going to uh, retire, like, because he was like a 67 or something like that. And he wanted to do a few more years for that, the, you know, just, you know, wrapping up his dentistry, the history or the dentistry life. So that's, that's why I asked him to come over just on, you know, to do it in a couple, couple of years. So. Hi, Dr. Ward. This is Saka. Hey, why are you right now? Okay. 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 That's fine. That's fine. Whenever you come back, okay, call me back. Okay. So he is in Africa right now. Wow. He's in <laughs> Africa. So... The what, what do you call it? The Japanese health insurance or Japanese national health care insurance or Japanese health care insurance or something national like health care insurance? Mm -hmm. Um, so they don't set the fees for implants, they don't. But funny thing is that they set the uh the fees for removing the implant, and uh, <laughs> if it fails, yeah, if it fails and it's to remove the implant and that in a different the office. And then I can just uh, claim it, it's, uh, but it's not good enough anyways, because if I do the, the removing implant, sometimes we have to do the bone graft and those kind of the sedative procedure, but it doesn't cover for that. So usually if I had to do that, the implant the recovery, this or the, the removal, the I have to charge for a different, that's for a fee for service. Okay. So, and also this is, they started the, the charging or the covering for the, the placing the implant for the overdenture for two implants for the, the mandibular in a specific uh, the facilities, which is like a, in a university environment or something like that. But that's not really the, the uh, So do you, do you predict that Japan may do what the United Kingdom did where, you know, 20 years ago, all 19,000 dentists participated with the NHS and now 25 years later, 5,000 are just fee for service and do not participate with the NHS. Or do, do, you, do you see any Japanese dentists just quitting and saying, you know what, I'm just... Yes, I, yeah, I understand. But, no, but I don't think uh, Japanese uh, the, uh, lack of dental society is going to quit using the national health insurance because of that. there's still an easy way to get the money because they are so much good, got used to, you know, just to do it at the same, same kind. They don't want to change uh, the, the critically. They, they just want to drag the, whatever they have been doing and the from the past so maybe from like a big town like cities like a Tokyo or Osaka or Nagoya or those kind of big cities there's a several places a similar similar the dentists claimed especially in Tokyo of course in uh, sometimes uh, the some dentists don't take the, those kind of the insurance do you think it, do you think it's like one percent or two percent or less than one uh, percent I just don't know exactly but maybe it's uh, 
less than five percent. Less than five percent. Yeah, but they they, are, they, are, they can just uh, do uh, do a good enough amount of the patient to just uh, get the earn um, the, their um, their money uh, the, with the only the private patient, which is doesn't take the uh, the that just pay for the fee for service. So maybe that some people go for it, but the, I don't think it's uh, not many people will go for it because the education itself is almost like okay, whatever you you come to the patient like this, just treat like this, treat like this, treat like this. The, the, that the way they teach how to treat the patient is like uh, depend upon the how they charge for the the, uh, the national health care insurance because they 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 prefer it okay this kind of patient you have to charge like this way and you have to use this material for this patient to get the uh, the the payback from their government but but education is not like this because if each patient each situation you have to diagnose well and what is the patient when I was in the United States that's what I learned okay the beside of the fee you know it doesn't matter for the money but first thing you have to think about it what is the best way for the patient then you have to talk about the fee if the implant is expensive or uh, the endodontic treatment is expensive or something like that but in, in japan it's different it's 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 a fee uh, the, you have to think about the the, uh, the how or uh, to manage the with the insurance first that's how they do, they do the the what is that and uh, for the insurance so th that's why when i was graduating from a university uh, the university dental school in 97 even the national uh, examination even the implant the word of implant wasn't even exist even the whole uh, examination that much they say japan is so much and, and the, the, the advanced, uh, not advanced but behind of those kind of the educations because you normally the right now they don't teach much about the removal of partial denture because of the dead the implant so that's why they teach the basic thing is about the uh, removal of partial denture but they're not the, not too much instead of the because the time is limited four years of den in dental school so they have to balance it it's a, you know this is rpd maybe less time but instead of the, the, uh, the squeezing the time you have this a little bit more time then you spend more time to teach the dental implant right so but the education itself, it seems like in the dental school, it hasn't been changed for a while. So I don't know. They're pretty much conservative. Very much. Very much. So do you, um, you, you can't advertise in Hong Kong or Singapore. Can you advertise your implant practice in Tokyo? No, actually, it's for the dental association in Japan. So I don't think it's implant. Uh, there is some word that we I can use for like an implant uh, center or some word. If they, they the, the government catches you, maybe they say you cannot use any specialty the implant or something like that. So I cannot say uh, implant or something like that. But sometimes some people in Tokyo, there's a lot of people advertising like an implant center or an implant clinic or something like that. But to be honest, like, I don't know. It's the, 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 there are just some regulation that uh, and, uh, you cannot really write down like an implant or something like so that. So do you, is this mostly an implant practice or is this a... Over here in my clinic? In, here in your dental office, is it? Is my, it my dental clinic is basically the uh, general. General dentist. So yeah, because the you know the, I would I like I said it's, I'm the fourth generation of dentistry. So I just didn't want to stick in a, only one. Fourth generation. So your dad, grandfather, and great grandfather mm -hmm. were all. Yeah. Are any of them alive? Uh, my father is still alive. And Does he still uh, practice? No, he had the, we had a practice in the Hibia close to this, this place, and but the, what the unfortunately my father had a motorcycle accident, and wow. uh, yeah, he got the paralyzed for two weeks uh, below the neck. So after that, he's uh, he's uh, is he he still kinda, paralyzed. No, no, no. He is getting better, but still, the half the right hand that side is uh, is uh, kind of numb. So it's very difficult to keep doing it's a dentistry. So that's the time I decided to not to you know to take over his practice because at the time as I was just just came back from the United States, so I didn't even have a chance to think about it. So what are we going to do for it, the, the dentistry in Japan? Because uh, as you know, as I explained in uh, '97 I graduated and didn't have the practice and I didn't have the, any kind of experience in Japan. Then went to the United States and got the education in the United States. So once I came back in the year 2003. I was uh, okay and doing uh, pretty much good at the, the implant practice, but not the dental practice in Japan. So that is about the time that my father had an accident. So that's why I decided to not do any kind of the work with then taking his practice over. So that's why we quit, closed our clinic, and I just went to the work for somebody else to to learn how to deal with it. Because of that, 
taking care of the, the Japanese patient and the people from the United States, different. Yeah, very different. So How's it different? Yeah, more the Japanese people is more conservative and the people don't like the um, surgical procedure. And uh, the, of course, since my patient is in the United States in Loma Linda, it's more like uh, I was in the implant clinic. So that's why they say everybody is so educated because the patient is, uh, themselves is educated because they come over to the clinic. And if I talk about the dental implant, they pretty much know. And I got scared the first time, the first patient, that they just uh, they print out the, one of the, the research from G, uh, the GBR. So they are just talking about it. Oh, okay, doctor, would you do uh, this kind of a procedure? What kind of material they do? Or what kind of the experience what you have? That is a patient that's, uh, that they have over there. But in Japan, maybe lately some of them, they wanted to know what, they, the, what kind of the treatment we provide. But before that, the patient is like, in Japan is like, oh, you know, your son of your the big doctor, your father, so like whatever, oh, you are good, you came from the United States, whatever. But it's, uh, they don't even ask what kind of procedure. It's, if they, they're the doctor, so okay, doctor, whatever you think it's good, go ahead, just please do it. So sometimes they don't care what kind of the treatment. So that's what I say, even though I say, if you, but if we, at the, because of that, that is based on the, maybe the, the treatment is under the uh, national healthcare insurance. So that's why I, they know the, the price is not gonna go that much high. So that's why they are thinking, about, oh, that's fine, that's fine. They, they please do it, please do it. But, but once if we talk about the, the implant and the boom, it put the price is so expensive, they say like, what are you talking about? You know, why are you so expensive? And the first time I came over here to Japan, the first patient I wanted to do that the agreement and the sign up for sheet, like the United States, they, they put it, all the documentation, right? Agreement, <laughs> sign it, and then what is the possibility of the, the, the surgical procedure, bleeding, swelling, or numbness, whatever, but you have to sign it before the implant treatment, right? But if I do this, everything translated in Japanese and ask the Japanese people to sign it for before the tr treatment, they reject, okay, I'm so scared, I don't want to do it, okay? So it's a little bit different. I, I, can, I couldn't do this, that's exactly the same treatment. Or or lawyers a big issue in Japan like they are lately nice. yes because lawyers. I came back like at, um, almost like 13 years ago but uh, the, at the beginning there are uh, they were not uh, we were not uh, even think about the lawyers or what kind of the issue they have but the, lately the patient is now they wanted to know what kind of the treatment we provide why the the implant is so high or why this GBR procedure, what kind of the, uh, the material we are using. So then sometimes it's a patient that, that we, uh, our doctor side, some people don't explain well to the patient because the, the explanation or the agreement of those kind of education wasn't provided and in the past because everybody is based on the like a treatment was provided like a healthcare insurance. But all of a sudden some doctors started doing those kind of like expensive treatment and without telling them or without the, the, the reaching to the agreement. So that's why they have the conflict or some kind of problem. Then uh, the lawyers uh, started the, uh, the get involved with the dental field. And another issue is like they, that at some of the school, they started making it a, a law school before we didn't have the law school. So there's a lot of the more lawyers who really wanted to have the job or issue. So they just, you know, or they, they hear about, oh, dentistry, maybe they, it's a good field, <laughs> maybe to do that, how come this low sue or something like that. So that's why they, maybe the low sue is something they're much, much more right now. So so what implant system are you using? I'm using it as a, a right now, it's a, a, like a global company, like a big company. So I started from the stereos because Loma Linda had a special treatment that, that, that relationship with the stereos, which is a Yoba Linda. It sounds like a Loma Linda, but the Yoba Linda is like only 30 minutes from the Loma Linda. So that's why, but the, as you know, the stereos were, the, the, uh, were merged and they the, the got the, the, uh, in a Nova Biocare. So at the time as I was using Nova Biocare and after came back, I was using a Densply Zive system. But anyways, any kind of the system I can provide for any kind of the country, pretty much like Europe and the United States or Brazil or South America, because uh, I have several patients about some patients I know they just stay here in Japan in a certain time but they go hope to go to the, their own country but I just wanted to have the big company because then they can 
get the, some, you know, the parts. If they, they have a problem with the parts or something like that, they, they can provide it still. So that's why I wanted to stick one co the several companies and who is like a big and it doesn't disappear. Does Japan, does Nippon make an implant? Yes, uh, the GC, as you know GC, GC right? GC, yes. Yeah, yeah like, like a pattern raising, okay? Yeah, You know yeah. pattern raising, you, you as a dentist. You glass be, animer, yeah, key glass animer, mask. yes, yes. Yeah. That, that company has a GC implant system in Japan, okay? But it's a, they, they're uh, providing it, and they, they developed one of the systems, even if it's in the Europe as well, but they don't have it in, in, in Japan, I mean in the United States. So, so did GC move their headquarters to Switzerland? Yes, they did. Because well, of the, I think a tax issue or something like that. They oh, it was to, for taxes? They, uh, maybe those kind of issues because anyways, they're they a big company. So that's why they, instead of the, having it as a headquarter in the Tokyo, uh, but it's, maybe it's better to have the, the headquarter over there. Maybe. <laughs> I but anyways, why, it, I wonder why they moved to Switzerland. Yeah, but because they are a good, good company, and also actually, is what happened is that I've been helping in the GC since I came over here in in Japan. Because what happened is I wanted to for my uh, my, my the, uh, master degree my, the, for, for my master thesis, I wanted to do some the, the research with the implant from Japan. So. But uh, there was no GC implant available at the time. So I just came back to Japan and I asked the GC guys and the why I ha I'm Japanese. I wanted to do that some, some kind of the help for to improve the Japanese implant system. So since then, I've been just uh, giving them uh, some advice or something like that. One of the implants they have in Japan marketing or selling right now in Japan is one of the, the, uh, the system that I, I got involved for a development. So... So where where is GC? Is it in Tokyo? In in, in Tokyo, yes. Is it near here? Uh yeah, it's uh 20, 20, 20 30 minutes. From and here. so is is the company mainly in Tokyo? They just have uh, headquarters in Switzerland just for tax purposes. I I guess I don't know about the tax pass purposes, but anyways, uh the the right I, now there's there's a CEO CEO is living in the Switzerland and the younger generation, the my generation. He's uh, the uh, he he's uh, uh, the, uh, living in Tokyo. So yeah, I noticed some of the um, German dental companies they move their headquarters to Austria. Oh, okay, yeah. for tax purposes. Huh. Um, very interesting. So so um, are you using the GC implant system now? Yes, I'm using it as a GC system as well. But as I wanted to make sure GC is not you know the uh, you cannot purchase in the United States, so I'm not going to be using it in any kind of the U.S. patient to place the implant. So I just most of the time it's just, uh, I make sure the patient is going to be stick around here in Japan, Tokyo. No, come on in, come on in, come on in. Is that a patient? Yeah, it's my patient, but it's uh, sorry. No, 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 come on ahead, in, go please. Ahead. I'm just uh, having an interview, so I'm yeah. going to... Oh, no, 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 no. No, no. <laughs> no. Is, is he an American? No, he is uh, half Japanese, half Filipino. Half, half. You Maybe can, you can, you can go sit ahead. Right here. You can sit right here. <laughs> no. No, no. no. Yeah. Mm. If you're okay, we can just... Uh, uh, we can start it up, okay? So you you need to go you need to go with a what, what time is it? It's um it's a twenty. No, so he came a little earlier. So what what time is his appointment? The, 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 his appointment is the two thirty. Do you well it, anything to finish on? I, I I wanted to capitalize on um since you've lived in both countries, mm -hmm. are there any other differences between um, dentistry in Nippon versus dentistry in America that you were able to? Um, because I I think it helps dentists think outside the box when they think. You know, when everybody in their country does it this way, if everybody in a country does it red, and then they see, oh, another country does it blue, it makes them think. Oh, okay. So you think there's any any think outside the box lessons of what you've seen different from um, United States versus Japan or Singapore, Hong Kong, or Southeast Asia versus United States to mm. make them food for thought, <laughs> things, things that are different? Oh, uh, actually, uh, as a dentist, I think it's... Uh, um for me, because I didn't have to open up a practice, or my, I didn't have my own practice in the United States, so that's why I cannot really compare what I have and the stuff I have had over there. But I think it is being in Japan, it's, uh, in Tokyo, uh, at least, and it's, I think it's a uh, quality I can just keep. I, actually, it's a goal for me, my practice is the, here. I wanted to do, do the dentistry like United States. 
because the United States, uh, the insurance system, also that the patient wise, you know, we don't need to uh, see a patient too many. But in Japan, to keep the, like a dental, uh, the insurance the situation, we have to see a patient a lot, like every, you know, 15, 20 minutes you know, or something like that. But I just, I wanted to talk. How many, the, how many patients is average, average dentist? Japanese dentists see a day since due to insurance. Yeah, actually, it's, uh, uh, there's some people that's. Do you know that? So, about 40 people from Japan to the hospital to see a dentist. But 40 to 40. Maybe this. Uh, come, come talk on the. You, know, you have to get on the podcast for the last one minute. <laughs> come here, come here, come here. You got a chair here. You have to. You have to be on the show the last one minute. Just uh, come but, on, you, the, your next patient's here. You have. You have to join us for the last minute. <laughs> Here, yes. come, come, sir. So you're a dental hygienist. Yes, I'm so tell, tell me your name. Atsuko Mastani. You what? My name is Atsuko, Atsuko Mastani. And you're a dental hygienist? Yes. And where did, where did you, did you go to, does the dental school have a hygiene program or is it? Yes, uh, I went to the, uh, so Hokkaido, do you know Hokkaido? The north part of Ho Japan. Mm -hmm. mm, Hokkaido Prefecture, uh, Hygiene College. The part of the um, um, dental school. So, do you do the cleanings here, or yes. do you do more dental assisting? Uh, usually, I do his cleaning, but sometimes I do his assistant. Always. Very good. All you hygienists back in America need to be assisting your dentist too. <laughs> They mostly just like to do cleanings, and you say, "Will you come help me?" They say, "No." Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I like I like uh, assistant too, so that's why I. I think it's, it should be balanced, right? Mm, Not too yes. many, because for them, it's the, only the cleaning is uh, making it so they're you know from arm is like irritated. I want, so I want you guys to talk about one last thing. I noticed you have a um, an intral camera uh -huh. right above your surgery, and you can you can film. Um, with an intro camera, and it's right on a big screen. Why, why do you do that? No, actually, I said during the, the recordings, I don't just do it at the big screen, but as only the screen big one is the, to show the patient it's like a panoramic x ray, and sometimes it's just a dental x ray to draw the pictures so of what, what is bad or what it's good about. So basically, so when we are taping it, it's at the, uh, the movie or something like that, I don't use a big screen, but I just want to make sure it's a, it, I'm taping it to the right location. It's all about it. So, and my my la you guys got to pay some money. My last and final question is, how come I've been in Japan for a week and I have seen no one driving my Lexus? I have a Lexus and I have not seen my Lexus in Tokyo. Do the, do they sell Americans the Lexuses that they won't sell in Japan? <laughs> no, lately it's some, but it's uh, the very few. The why, why is that? I think it's a Toyota has, uh, because of the Lexus is pretty much the, the sold, the, they, they made it the company, the name itself is to sell in the United States. Oh. So that's why it's, it's uh, the same kind of the engine, the framework, everything, but the, the, they have it say, a Toyota name here. So here it's a Toyota. So if you see the Lexus here in Tokyo, is somebody who like the Lexus buying from their U.S. Lexus here? No, no, but no, no. But no. Lately, lately, we have a Lexus plan. Yeah. Lexus plan, but a uh, Toyota's Toyota Lexus. Yeah. Toyota. Yeah, Lexus, I have right Lexus. Now. You have a Lexus. Yes. Mm. So that's why this uh, original. But the lately, right? Mm, but a, more than 10 years, more I think. Years. Mm. So when you do a cleaning, how long do you schedule a patient for a cleaning? Uh, usually one hour. One it's hour. a very simple case, but if I have a heavy case, for example, my patient have some problem about the periodontal issue or something, I need one hour half. And why do you, why do you have so many friends in America? You you said you have friends in <laughs> Mississippi, Louisiana, <laughs> Chicago. How how do you make all these friends in America? Because I'm very friendly person. That's why. <laughs> <right. laughs> That's right. Did you meet them over the internet, or did you go back to America? No, 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 no. no. Uh, so I have several friends here from U.S. So and then everyone introduced me another friends. So and then several time I went there. And then everyone introduced me, some other friends, so friends of friends, or, and the friends of friends of friends, or something like that. So now are you gonna come to Phoenix and visit me and Ryan? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll give you a, we'll give you a cactus that you can take home. <laughs> <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> 
<laughs> oh, so that's any, nice. <laughs> anything else you want to share um, on the final minute? Uh, any anything else you want to say? Any anything? No, I just uh, um, thank you for your the time of coming over. Uh-huh. Then this, then I hope that you're gonna have you guys are gonna have enjoy the time in Japan and then hopefully come back in the gang and do some schedule. Tell me in advance a little more. <laughs> 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 but anyways, uh, I, I just like the, your idea and sharing the, all the information to improve the all kind of the, the dental work. It doesn't matter the uh, uh, the countries because of the, I just uh, to help, wanted to help or improve the whatever the service we can provide for the patient. So that's the, the whole idea, and uh, the, that's why it's, uh, I just, uh, you know, got an interview, and it's, uh, that hopefully it's all the patients it's all over the world can be evenly nice uh, that can get the uh, the nice uh, the treatment, right? That is very sweet, and I think the um, it would be so romantic and so special um, if you someday on uh, create an online CE course. Mm-hmm. Um, every time we put up a course on downtown, somebody from every single country, there was a, um, the other day there, I saw on Facebook, a dentist named Neil Ponte from, um, Kathmandu, Nepal, um, their dental study club was, um, just watching an online CE course. So I hope someday you create us a course on dental town. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just got an interview somewhere. So. Okay. <laughs>